your brothers and sisters. Now are you the stay in your time? Splendid. Brilliant. Brilliant. You are learning. Indeed, you are all brilliant in your essences. Yet you do not perceive that which is your brilliance. That which is your illumination within the heavens that you call your earth plane. So you allowed yourself the freedom to come hence into that which you call the audience of mirror so that you understand what it is to be freedom, exemplified, personified. In the knowingness of that which is the understanding called essence of God unfettered. Mm. What is freedom? Eh? Tell me. That is the limited perception of freedom. <laughs> I will tell you this. There is that which you call a grand bird in the air that soars with magnificent beauty and splendor indeed. Gaining itself the understanding called symbol of freedom. Do you understand of which I speak? Mm. Now. This that you call the bird, it knows the limitations. That which you call the boundaries, that which you call the barriers of earth and water and mountain. And indeed it allows itself to perceive and know these barriers, to experience them, to love them. And therefore, it has the freedom to soar with joy and exhilaration within its life essence. To be indeed the captain of the skies. To be indeed the commander of its essence. Why? Because it understands and it loves and it allows the barriers. So it is not lack of limitation. It is knowing and understanding and embracing limitation. You see. That is the unlimited understanding called freedom. Now, as you come forth into that which you call this your earth plane, who have many of your, shall we call them, spiritual endeavors, that bring you forth into that which you call fervent exercise to gain access to the knowingness of freedom. Mm. But they all mm, call you away from your physicality. Come hither, come hither. Allow yourself to be that which is etheric. But the understanding of physicality gains invalidity in this manner. It is no longer valid to be human. No longer understood to be divine, to be earthly, to be physical. So you go forth with your head in the clouds, literally, and allow yourself the understanding of freedom there, in the air. But you know that every atom within you, within your physicality, is pulsing and rushing to the freedom of God's essence within it. It is within you, it is not without you. This is always the mirror for here, always. And if you experience and perceive limitation and barrier, it is because you know it here. It is because you have not allowed yourself to understand and embrace the barriers within you. I will tell you a story. There indeed is a grand mountain. It is indeed a high peak that you may call one and a half kilometers. Its utmost parts of it are covered in snow. Mm, indeed, it is beauteous and splendorous, and all who gaze upon it are in awe of it. Now, so you come upon this mountain, and you perceive, aha, there is a trail to the summit of it. I will climb this mountain, and upon the top of it, there is freedom, the capital F. I will know no boundaries. 
I will be limitless. I can fly and soar into the air, for I will have experienced fervently the climb onto the top. I will owe it to myself to know freedom. And I will have earned it, so it will be mine. Now, you come upon this pathway and you travail and labor fervently and gather yourself in that which you call the understanding of rocks and barriers in your pathway from time to time. But this is all right. And do you know that you have found the pathway to freedom? It is yours. There is no other way. Indeed, when you call it a thing, probably after yourself, and then you go forth and you hear an entity somewhere in the distance. And they all say unto you, I have found the path to freedom. It is here. And you say unto them, No, it is here. You are wrong. That is a, what you call a misleading understanding. Now, this is all right. You see none other than your own. You do not understand the exuberance and joy that they have upon their travail of their own pathway. And then you come upon a grand boulder within your pathway and you understand it not. And it is an obstacle unto you, so you gather yourself in frustration and flounder in the forest for a while of your time. And then you perceive another. You say unto yourself, aha, perhaps I was wrong. Perhaps this is the pathway. I shall give myself the opportunity of travailing upon it for a while of my time. And you do thus, and many of you become fatigued for your labor, and you indeed ought to allow yourself the seasonment of your embodiment. And then you return unto parentage who have a pathway on the other side of the mountain. It is indeed disorienting for you. Mm, your mm, mm, parentage pathway is so unfamiliar to you at times that you become very frustrated with life in entirety. It is a very common thing upon this your plea for parentage and siblings to have unfamiliarity with each other's pathways. And there are many times it is so disorienting unto you that you travel around the mountain, round and round, over and over again, viewing all the different pathways at the same level, wondering indeed if there is even a mountain, and if there is, if you would desire a pathway. You see? But you know, the closer you get to the top of it, the closer all the pathways come unto one another. They all converge. What is it that you think a convergence is? The understanding of not knowing, but one pathway indeed, one allowance of apex is indeed at the summit. And then you may perceive thousands of pathways and understand each of their validity and their own isness. Each one is the path to freedom. Each one is mm, understood in the joy and magnificence of its own easiness. Some are grassy, some are sandy, some are smooth, some are craggy, but they are all beauteous. And as you come unto that which is the top of the mountain, you understand what it is to be free. You understand sovereignty and support. Mountain, its symbol is support, solidity, stability. It exists in its own quiet, divine knowingness. It does not desire to be elsewhere. It does not desire to be else thing. It understands and allows and understands embracing of all its boundaries called pathways. It does not desire to be without them. It does not run and flee hence from it, but rejoices in it, for it is comprised of separate components called boundaries. And it indeed supports life grandly. It has life scurrying all about it, 
the birds, the deer, children, humanity. And it indeed allows that experience called life in whatever form it takes to understand a beauteous experience within its own understanding of freedom. They partake in partiality, the knowingness of freedom, by partaking of the experience of the mountain. Become the mountain, become sovereign, become support, become allowance, and then you become freedom. Now, freedom is not fleeing or running from what you call practicality of earth plane, or responsibility, or hiding your head in the sand as it were, or allowing yourself to discount your experience here. That is not freedom. Freedom is experienced only in the union of that which you call the aspects of the wholeness. When you are free, you know it all. You experience it all. You embrace it all. There are no separations that are invalid. They are all wondrous. That which you call practical application of your daily life and experience allows you to understand the incorporation of the mirrors you encounter as yourself. The source essence, the God I am essence, comes forth upon this your plane to understand itself through itself by separation of itself. And in doing this, it becomes into the understanding of experience, of emotion, of focus and then allowance of merging out of the focus into the wholeness again. Do you know what planet is most perceptible upon this plane without a telescope? Earth. <laughs> You see how you operate? <laughs> how can you be free if you do not even know what it is you would desire to be free from? <laughs> that which is the understanding of fleeing is fear induced. Fear of countenance with an aspect that you would think, that you would consider, that you would contemplate will limit you, better you, bind you. But it does not do it, you do it. If you do not choose to do it, then do not so. You see? Lie upon the fresh cut sod of your earth and gaze up into the heavens and see God. It reflects itself back onto you constantly, but you do not see it. You are God, the physical atoms of your embodiment, and that which you immerse yourself within, called daily activity, called life, called family, called relationships, called even your business houses, your busyment of the embodiment, even that, when it is understood as part of the whole, gives you freedom. Freedom to operate within it, for you understand the aspects so that you may merge them. You cannot merge them if you do not allow them, if you do not affirm their mm, beingness, if you do not understand them and appreciate them. How can you merge them into the whole if you deny them? Denial is fear. Denial is separation. Denial is focus. More so in the physicality and less into the freedom that I speak of. You desire to be free of responsibility, many of you. Oh, but if I did not have vast, then I could be free. Does this sound familiar? Mm. But you know, if you did not have vast, you would not understand what it is to love unconditionally and to allow the sovereignty of others to experience as they so choose. The cup of Christ consciousness is brimming full of the creative essence called God to create their own experience as they so choose. Allow them their sovereignty, and then you free them. They are not dependent on you no more than you on them. 
giving them this freedom to be responsible as it were unto themselves is the gift of God. And as you give them this God, this gift of God, multiplied, it is likened unto the stars within the firmament of being. And it becomes illumination and light unto the world. Indeed, it becomes the freedom of the universe when you give them this freedom. And I speak not only of entities, I speak of situations, circumstances, encounters, relationships, everything. Free it. Do not mm, desire it to be understanding of your sovereignty. Give it its sovereignty to be confused, if it so desires. To be indeed rampant with limitation. <clears throat> it is all right. This is of which I speak. That which you call limitation is an aspect of God in as much validity as that which is unlimitation. For without the two you do not have the whole. That which is the color of violet is indeed representative of the freedom of the new age, that which you call the Aquarian age, the era of God. But you know, violet would not be violet without all its elements, red, white, and blue. That which is mm, red and blue would create a deep purple. That which is white and red creates pink. That which is the understanding of white and blue creates that which is azure. Pastel, none of which is the understanding of the vibrational spectrum you call violet. All the aspects, limited as they are in their vibration, create the wholeness. Without the wholeness and without its composition understanding, there would not be any freedom. You are the mountain. You indeed exist within that which you call separations and boundaries within you. That that you call this your plane is manifest, it is created upon the premise of separation. You do not live within one another's skins, do you? You will have separate embodiments from one another, separate consciousnesses from one another. And recognizing this allows you to perceive the divinity within this separation. For it is multifaceted aspects of that which you call the prismatic understanding of God I am. And without the prism of it, it would not be complete. You all come here to gaze into one another's soul essence, to perceive God and allow yourself respect and admiration of this limited perception of that which be you in physicality. And then you go forth and release it, not sever it, not separate it, release it into the all that is. Allow it to become unified and merged. Freedom is merging. It is not mm, severing the chains from you. It is not indeed allowing that which you call the um, breaking of the bonds. But it is allowing of that which is the bondage to be loved and transmuted into non-essence. For the breaking is a severance. It is an effort. You see? And the transmuting is allowance into divinity. That is what ascension is. It is allowance into utter freedom through union with limitation love and admiration for what it represents unto you, a different facet of God I Am's creation. If you did not have such a thing as boundaries and limitations, you would not have the difference between water and air and earth. And they indeed are magnificent. That which you call the velvet tapestry of your heavens, it indeed is beauteous. And you may gaze into it and perceive foreverness in a limited manner, that which be you as well. And indeed, you may understand that which is divinity, near and far, mm. and sister moon and brother star. Indeed, you may understand God in both clay and clod and in that which is unessence, non-manifest. You'll see, Freedom, that which is independence, does this sound familiar? Mm. 
it is in dependence of all the aspects unto one another to create the whole. It is not severing. When you go forth and desire transcending into that which you call unlimited life, it is not leaving a lesser behind, just merging with that which you judge to be lesser, and allow yourself to bring forth the wholeness into unlimitedness. Do you understand? That which is the jewel of life can be captured within your heart. Mm. Understood without telescopic manifestation. Understood merely by the allowance of its sparkle to bring forth that which is the resonance of divine light within you and splay it into the, all the frequencies that you represent. The precious gemstone of you. You all are so multifaceted and you do not see it. You do not know it. You do not see the reality that exists before you. You perceive realities out there somewhere, far beyond your understanding called Mm, life on this your plane. Mm. But if you would appreciate life, you would experience reality. How many of you in this your understanding of your evening past went forth and mm, captured the moon within your breast? How many of you went forth this your morn and saluted the sun? It is real. Is it not? It is part of your reality. How many of you went forth and said unto it, Divine being of light, I salute you. And I resonate with the experience of joy and exhilaration. For indeed you represent the reflection of reality that be I. And you are a teacher and mirror and symbol of that divine reflection of light. And I salute you in the grandeur and magnificence that you are, and in the knowing that I be also thus. How many of you did this? This is your reality also, is it not? Did you even think of it? You're walking blindly, so desirous of being spiritual that you do not encapsulate that which is life about you so that you may indeed go forth into unlimitedness likened unto rats in a maze. But it is all right. There is no judgment here. I am merely giving forth unto you a perception that you have not considered before, so that you may see the light, as it were, in a different aspect. There is no right and wrong. There is no better and best or good and bad. There only is. And when you come into the knowingness of this and capture it within that which is the cornucopia of your experience, you will know God then, and the glory of God will be exhibited within you. The second coming of Christ will not occur, or superconsciousness, as some of you call it, will not occur until you embrace the wholeness as divine, including separation, limitation, bondage, suffering, whatever you judge it to be. It will not come. It will not be apparent unto you until you know all of this as divine as bringing forth the creation of God I am into a certain manifestation. You are all your own slave masters. You do it best when you do it unto yourself. For indeed, that what you call the don't fence me in? <laughs> you place the stake in the post constantly and string the barb around it constantly. You understand the idea of barrier and boundary as a containment device and not as a freeing device. It frees you to understand and appreciate what it is. Therefore, you have the freedom to soar around it once you know what it is, where it is, and understand its sovereignty. Many of you have 
had a barb upon your rumples, know its sovereignty. Any of you that have had a, what you call head-on collision with a mountain, know its sovereignty. That is what the bird experiences when it first desires to exhibit its sovereignty over the mountains. Then it allows, appreciates, and then it goes joyous and not fearful that it shall indeed encounter this again. The river of life is golden if you will but see the gold within it and not the muck and the mire. For it is not murky unless you perceive it this way, and perception is a choice. Your barriers, your boundaries are choices, they are options. You allow yourself focus into a certain reality, and in that now moment, all the other realities are, as you call it, on hold. And that is a choice. You place boundaries around a certain experience. And you may choose to understand the river of gold flowing through you, rather than that which is the understanding of the mud and the muck and the mire and the murkiness. And there was an entity called Jean-Pierre Raymond. He was a composer. And that which is the understanding of scientist preceded his uh, bringing forth of understanding of music in this way. And he did an understanding called a uh, paper. Do you know what this is? Uh, a scientific illustration of limited divine thought. And that which is the understanding of this was called a treatise de la magnique. That was a topic discussing the harmonics of sound, of the vibration called music. And because he was a scientist, illustration of his endeavor through teaching. He had classroom. However, through this that you call the paper, the treatise de l'harmonique. Indeed, he enraptured with this beauty, the way it stirred his soul. Indeed, likened unto the Big Dipper. Indeed, he became quite entranced until every moment was taken with his discovery of harmonics. Mm. Spilling over. And one of them from him. Monsieur Ramon, how is it you compose? What is it that you do when you create such beauty, such splendor with that which is called tone, such a simple thing? And he said unto him, I am freest to create beauty when I have the knowingness of limitation. Do you know what this means? Do you understand it at all? When you understand what it is that you want to create, you have choices, you have options. It is called narrowing the options. <laughs> and as you create, you choose a particular note, a particular octave, a particular flow, and you allow it to flow through you. Many times this choice is of soul level, it is not conscious, and you channel your soul lessons onto that which you call papyrus. And indeed, allow yourself to flow with the river of gold and create splendor, the grandeur of God illustrated. This is that which he did. He understood the beauty and magnificence of the boundaries of the notes and the harmonics they contain. And he illustrated through this knowingness and the appreciation of it, and indeed the embracing of it, he created God. That is what art is, God exemplified. And you also can create beautiful symphonies of your life 
stringed quartets, orchestrations, celestial choirs. They can all be your life if you will understand the beauty within the limitation. And you may have the freedom to go to any octave you so desire. But when you recognize the limitation within an octave, that gives you the understanding of how to, it is to create beyond this limitation. You see, you have the freedom to soar between the mountains then, when you understand where it is the mountains are. Now, you will all go hence from here, I know this, and scratch your heads and say, what did all of that mean? And you will beep your horns at your grand light within your crossings. <laughs> and you will be frustrated with that which you call limitation and boundaries in your life. One of them is time, but we will discuss that another time. And you indeed will gaze into that which you call the grand reflector and say unto yourself, there is too much abundance of beauty to sail upon this embodiment. <laughs> and I am frustrated with this. You laugh, but you do it all the time. <laughs> and then you will not be immersing yourself within the beauty of this limitation. You will not be embracing it. You will not be understanding it. You will be continuing in separation, in disallowance, in the understanding of non-validity of that which you judge. And this is all right, but I wish you to know what it is that you do. Your souls have cried out for eons to be unchained from that which is called your non-understanding of freedom. It has cried, and therefore that which you call the essence which be I has called upon that which is the God of gods and allowed appearance in this manner so that we may come unto you to illustrate to you what is freedom. I am free, you desire to say unto yourself. But what does this mean? What does it carry within it? How can you know I am free if you do not allow yourself the keys to the freedom? The keys are love, light, laughter, grand trinity, trinity of divinity. Laughter is the buoyancy that will allow you to be free when you otherwise would not be. Humor, indeed, is the juxtaposition of your life experience <coughs> against one another and countenance with one another so that it appears to be out of sync. But do you know what sync is? Synchronicity. And synchronicity is always apparent, even though it is not obvious. It is going beyond the obvious into the unobvious. That is what ascension is. I so desire all of you to bring forth fervent grasping of the keys of freedom. Here it is! Take it if you want it. If you do not, there is no judgment. But do not go through life desiring a thing that you indeed may create if you so choose. I so desire you to be free to fly, to go forth into the unlimited dimension with that which be I. I so desire this. That is what the Aquarian Age is. Freedom, unlimitedness, sovereignty, mutual admiration and respect of one God for another. That is freedom. 
And I want it all so for you. I want you all to be unfettered of judgment, <coughs> of fear, of hatred. And if you so desire, come with me and I will tell you what is freedom. I will show you what is freedom. I will allow you to know what is freedom. That which is the mirror before you is the knowingness of you reflected onto you. And if you will but gaze into this mirror, I will show you. Grand God's all, beauteous God's all, lights of the universe all. Go forth with this light and illuminate your pathway. Cast forth this flame of freedom within your breast. And be the candle for others within the darkness. Allow them to experience admiration, respect, and appreciation of that which they have previously judged to be limitation and lack of freedom. I love you and I want you to be free! But I cannot want for you what you do not want for yourself. Please remember Freedom is union with all, everything, every aspect, all of life. That is freedom. And then you may say unto yourself, unto the entire universe, I am free! I am free! We'll bid you all farewell for now. I love you. Namaste. But remember love. It's our pleasure to share this with you. For further information, you may contact Reflections of Divinity, Post Office Box 30724, Santa Barbara, California, 93130, or call area code 805-969-2801. Thank you.